Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of semi-finals of Clutch Chess International 2020 and today I would like to show you uh, the game number 8 between Magnus Carlsen and Levon Aronian. So as you remember, Magnus Carlsen uh, was winning 6-2 to two and Levon Aronian needed to do something. Uh, and why game number 8? Because Magnus Carlsen said this was, you know, his favorite game of this match so definitely worth to see and what happened in the game number seven uh, actually magnus as black uh, he played nimzovic defense believe me or not but he played knight on c6 and after knight on f3 d5 so the same opening which magnus play against bill gates if you haven't seen this game <laughs> just check over there so uh, not really serious i mean magnus carlsen played that many times so he definitely knows what is going on and it's very similar to some variations of the of the Scandinavian defense. However, um, definitely that's not the best of the best of the openings. And Levon Aronian in the interview said, OK, Magnus gave me the chance. And he was actually doing really, really well because uh, he had much better situation. But in the critical moment, Magnus Carlsen sacrificed the exchange, uh, totally messed up the pawn structure of Levon Aronian. He had the pawns on, on a4, a2, c2 and c4. Then Magnus brought the king uh, to the center. This was uh, still middle game, end of the middle game. Uh, and he won that game. So after that we had another game which I'm gonna show you right away and here Magnus Carlsen open with c4 and he don't play any shenanigans then he play you know serious opening we have knight on f6 uh, we have knight on c3 e5 English opening g3 and now bishop on b4 and here e4 Magnus Carlsen don't care about the knight this is actually the main line which was not played by Levon Aronian uh, bishop takes on c3 d takes on c3 and this is the main line however levon goes for the castle and we have knight g on e2 protecting the knight uh, and now d6 h3 taking control of the g4 square and now knight on c6 by levon aronian bishop on g2 a6 preparing b5 and now castle by magnus carlsen we have b5 as planned and now d3 so defending the pawn on c4 we have exchange on c4 and now bishop on c5 putting the bishop on this diagonal which can be slightly inconvenient as maybe magnus carlsen would like to play f4 in the future we have king on h2 unpinning the pawn and here uh, there are a couple of games in the database knight on d4 is the known move um, a5 is the known move uh, and also rook on e8 so these continuations were played before but levon aronian goes for something new at least it wasn't played on the top level yet and he goes for rook on b8 putting the pressure on b2 and now this bishop cannot develop easily so a b3 magnus have to uh, have to move the the pawn and now a5 a5 with the plan of uh, a4 of course we have knight on d5 moving this knight to the beautiful outpost and now a4 as planned and here how would you continue how would you develop the pieces now you have only the bishop Okay, uh, so if you would like to develop bishop on b2 or bishop on d2, uh, it's quite passive, but these are the best moves recommended by the engine. If you would like to play something like bishop on g5, which looks pretty, pretty nice because now uh, the knight is attacked twice. The problem is the king is on h2. So uh, knight on g4, h takes on g4 and now queen takes on g5. And this king is is not in the safe position anymore uh, and black can really really enjoy the game so uh, have to be very careful here magnus choose to bishop on e3 and after a takes on b3 a takes on b3 bishop e3 he takes with the pawn f takes on e3 so he doubled the pawns on the on the e file however yes they are they are definitely weak pawns however uh, they also controls quite a lot of squares okay so uh, for example this knight cannot jump to d4 that's that's some advantage also there are some um, outposts for the for the knights so uh, not really bad 
we have knight on d7 with the idea of remaneuvering the knight to, to c5 and maybe in the future play something like f5 uh, attacking this center. We have knight e on c3 and now knight on c5 as planned. Now this knight actually attacks uh, b3 twice, also puts some pressure on the central pawn, however for now it's, it's very well defended and now we have knight on b5. So the rook cannot take on b3 and also there is another problem uh, because c7 is attacked twice. So we have knight on e6 defending and now h4. h4 with the idea of bringing the bishop to h3, eliminate the defender of c7 and then uh, win the pawn on c7. We have bishop on d7, bishop on h3 as planned and now rook b7. So now the pawn on uh, c7 is defended twice with the queen as well uh, and now b4 uh, and what to play now we have knight on e7 by Levon Aronian rook on a2 with the very very simple plan Magnus Carlsen want to double the rooks on the semi open file so as you see these pawns are pretty weak however the semi open f file can be very very strong uh, the problem is now Levon Aronian play knight on c8, knight on c8. He should go for some move, you know, like, like king on h8 and then after rook a on f2, just play f6 uh, and his position is a pretty, pretty strong in the center. It's not easy, you know, to bite all of that uh, and he could, you know, continue this way. However, he play, as I said, knight on c8 and Magnus immediately resigned from his plan uh, of doubling the rook on the, on the f file and he play rook on a8 and now Levon Aronian is in a real real troubles what to play now uh, if he tries for example uh, something like c6 you know attacking the the knights it looks good however knight on d6 knight on d6 and now attacking this this rook uh, and rook can go to a7 uh, and yes, can exchange something. Uh, however, black would be in a huge trouble. So for example, knight on b7. And now this queen cannot actually leave the eight ranks because all the squares are controlled by white. This knight doing really, really great job here. So something like queen on e8 maybe, knight b6, now attacking the bishop twice. So now bishop have to move. Uh, and now knight on d6, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop twice. So all the moves could be forced, okay? Queen on e7. Uh, and now there are a lot of interesting lines, but I will just show you one of them. Knight b on c8. And after knight on c8, then knight f7, knight f7. A lot of sharp lines uh, appears in this game. So this is why Magnus Carlsen said this is the best game of the of this match against uh, uh, Levon Aronian. Uh, and now, for example, here after rook on f7, bishop e6, and you cannot take with the with the queen because there is a checkmate, okay, on the on the um, on the eight rank. So not this way. And knight on d6 is still winning for white. The simplest way is bishop on f5 just exchange everything you know take with the rook uh, king f7 and then b5 uh, and just support this pawn you know escort it and uh, promote to the queen and win the game queen of course uh, can do it very very easy so uh, definitely c6 is not the greatest uh, way to play it's just too early and also bishop on b5 it's problematic because rook c8, look how rich is this position. Queen uh, on c8, knight e7, forking the king and the queen and winning the queen. So uh, definitely after rook on a8, black are in troubles and what to play? Levon Aronian play king on h8. So he definitely wants to avoid any of these shenanigans, you know, uh, forks on the on the e7. However, here Magnus play queen on h5 and now finding another spot to, to attack, another weakness. Uh, what to play now? King on h8 of course is possible, but Levon Aronian play queen on e8, so defending the, the pawn on f7, and now bishop f5, very very simple move, 
a, a very very simple threat how to answer you cannot play g6 because queen h6 uh, and then knight coming to f6 and you're gonna have the the queen attacked and the checkmate on h7 which is more important so you cannot you know defend that so h6 was played and here uh, actually we had a bishop on h3 so look at this Magnus Carlsen play bishop to f5 weaken the pawn structure and retreat with the bishop however here he missed the favorite combination uh, of the grandmasters who who actually uh, were commenting on this game Knight on f6, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, uh, and the point is that the knight cannot be taken because queen h6 with check and follow to uh, checkmate. So this is not possible, queen e7 would have to be played, and after knight on d7, queen on d7, queen g6, queen g6, if Magnus find it, this would be, you know, the the one of the most beautiful combinations this year. It's so beautiful. And after f takes on g6, bishop takes on e6 with the attack on the queen. It doesn't look so mind-blowing yet, but after, for example, rook on f1, uh, bishop on d7, rook on f8, because the, the knight is under attack, uh, rook on c8, uh, rook on c8, and now bishop c8, this rook would be uh, somewhere, you know, not in the greatest place, okay, bishop e6, and white gonna play with the knight and the bishop against this rook, so definitely better position for white, but this is nothing, because black probably would take the bishop, don't want to lose the, the queen, so takes the bishop and now rook on f8, king h7, and now Rook A on C8, checkmate is coming. So the only move if you want to save the, the, the position, queen on C8 can be of course played, so sacrifice the queen for the rook, uh, or G5. Uh, making some escaping space for the, for the king, but then H5, okay, blocking that. And now G6, and now the point is, uh, that the queen still defends g8. So first rook c on e8, attacking the queen, and now if queen, you know, moves on this diagonal, want to keep the control, that would be a checkmate, okay? This is a check and this would be a checkmate. So the queen would have to go to d7 and only now the rooks can attack on the king, okay? So rook on h8, king g7, rook e on g8, king f7, and now winning the queen, okay? And this would be, this would be just mind-blowing if Magnus Carlsen finds something like that. But he plays bishop on h3, also very strong move, and now what to play now? This is the question, what to play now as black? Uh, f6, F6 actually it's a it's a forcing just exchange the pieces queen on e8 rook on e8 a bishop e6 and then however you take if you take with the bishop the knight b on c7 winning the exchange okay you have to you have to give up something so for example bishop on d8 otherwise uh, you're gonna lose the bishop uh, or if the rook comes to uh, e7 then you're gonna lose this rook so bishop on d5 knight on e8 and now bishop e6 defending however a knight on d6 and uh, and yeah this is just uh winning for white these two connected pass points of course gonna win the game so start from c5 and then just continue uh, and if you take with the rook, uh, the problem is knight b on c7, the same move, and this rook is trapped, actually, so so the same story. So you can exchange, for example, for this rook, rook on c7, knight on c7, rook e7, knight d5, move the rook to e8, and now b5, b6, b7, and promoting and winning the game. So uh, this way or another, after f6, uh, nothing gonna work. So Levon Aronian now tries c6 the problem is the pawn on c6 uh, defends d6 okay so he plays c6 however in studio everybody was so excited about rook f6 the move like bobby fisher played against paul benko and now uh, g takes on f6 is of course not possible because of the checkmate 
Uh, but also king on h7 doesn't work because still rook on h6 with check if king on g8 then we would have the the checkmate on h8 so uh, g takes on h6 and now uh, the knight can jump to f6 it's not defended anymore by the pawn and win the queen so uh, also not this way uh, Black could try to play something like g6, but it's still losing because queen on h6 with check, king g8, and now bishop e6. And after uh, bishop e6, knight d on c7, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop. What to play now? Uh, for example, queen on e7, maybe with attack on the, on the rook. The problem is knight e6, f takes on e6, and now queen g6. And now if queen on g7, that would be a, just a checkmate because now king f8 uh, and now rook on c8. This knight was not defended anymore. So king on e7 and that would be a checkmate. Uh, and if king on h8, then queen h6, king g8, rook on g6. And now after king on f7, rook g7, very nice skewer, but again king e8 and first rook on c8 with check and after king on d7 only now take the queen and of course checkmate uh, in another move. So uh, as you see, this is not playable. Also uh, any other moves are, are losing. If you want to, you know, uh, move the queen on d8 and keep an eye on the on the knight this time, uh, it's also losing because knight on e6, queen on f6, this is possible, however, uh, of course, this is also losing. Knight g5 and, uh, and yeah, you have to give up the queen and lose the game. But as I said, Magnus Carlsen uh, choose a more simple, pragmatic way and he play knight on d6, forking the queen and the rook. Uh, and what to play now? The queen is under attack. You cannot just move the queen uh, because you're gonna lose the rook for free. And this queen has no escaping squares. All of these are controlled by, by the knight. Okay, and this also controlled by the by the pawns. So you achieve nothing, you just lose the rook. So uh, in this position, uh, Levon Aronian is forced to take the knight. So we have knight on d6, rook on e8, rook on e8, and now knight f6. Another move, another tactic. So very, very beautiful. The problem is you cannot really take on f6 because rook f6. Okay, and now checkmate is coming. If you play something like king on g7, try to run, then rook h6. And after king on f8, uh, queen on e5. You cannot run because where are you going? Okay, and you have to retreat back and you're gonna get checkmated. Uh, and even if you play something like knight on c4, defending on e5, there is another checkmate here. Rook h7. And now wherever you go, you're going to get checkmated, you know, on F7. So uh, not possible to take the knight. This is why we have rook on E7 by Le Levon Aronian and now C5. So first kicking the knight. Almost everything wins in this position. However, C5 is the, is the simplest way. Uh, knight on C4 and now knight on D7, uh, rook B on D7 and now rook f7 another tactic have you seen the game with so many tactics and so beautiful even if magnus carlsen didn't find some of these beautiful you know tactics but they exist in this game this game is just insane rook f7 this is just another one what to play next levon aronian took the the rook but he doesn't have much choice so rook on f7 and now bishop e6 attacking the rook one rook another rook and the knight what is very very important and after rook on f2 king h3 he resigned and he resigned because if for example he plays something like rook on d2 uh, trying, I don't know, to double the rooks on the second rank. The king still can escape, but don't need because queen e8 and he gonna checkmate. Can you see a checkmate? Actually, you can, you know, try to find. This is a forced checkmate in four moves. King on h7 and now bishop g8, uh, king on h8, bishop f7. And this is a checkmate, okay? So not this way, uh, but also a rook on d8 trying to prevent doesn't work because simply 
bishop c4 wins this knight so this is why 11 aronian resigned the game after king on h3 uh, and i would like to show you uh, just this graphic magnus carlsen as you see uh, he advanced to finals uh, he got 12 points and 11 aronian only six points so uh magnus carlsen won first two games and as you see in this one uh he was just you know this was just phenomenal game uh, rich in tactics and Levon had uh, really huge problems here and then uh, another four games were drawn so um, Magnus Carlsen didn't push so much in the clutch games as well uh, he didn't care for this you know uh, extra extra rewards uh, extra three thousand dollars per clutch game however Magnus Carlsen of course advanced uh, and in another semi-final Fabiano Caruana actually manage to win against Wesley So. Can you believe that? He was losing 6-2, to two. however, at the end, uh, he just managed to win, and I will show you one of the of the games. Uh, but for now, that's, that's enough for today, and uh, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. Uh, and if you don't want to miss other games from this tournament and other quality content, just press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.